Bless you, everybody. It's not only wonderful to have a definition as to what the gifts of the Spirit actually and really are, truly are, but it's a wonderful thing to see how they functioned in persons that had two eyes like you, one nose like you, ten fingers like you, just a regular human being. And that's the lesson that we're going to deal with right now. Uh, we have dealt with the gifts of the Spirit functioning in the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now that might be a little heavy for you, you know? Uh, because you say, well, he was the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, but uh, the Apostle Paul, uh, <laughs> he fought the church and killed part of the church. And, and, and so he certainly was different. Now, uh, on page 7 to 6, the Apostle Paul, he, he functioned and his ministry operated in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The amazing revelation regarding these nine gifts from the Holy Spirit, from God out of heaven through the Holy Spirit to us, to the church, was brought uh, to the universal church, the, the information on it, uh, through this person called Paul. He was one time called Saul of Tarsus. Later, God changed his life and he was called Paul. Uh, it, it, was, it was he who who numbered the gifts of the Spirit, that there are nine functioning and operating. Three is the perfect number of the Bible, and so nine would be triple perfection, perfection times perfection. And, and uh, everything in the universe that is perfect functions with the number three, and, and uh, the gifts of the Spirit also do, and the fruit of the Spirit is the same. Uh, he named them and he made laws regarding them, or he, at least he, through the Holy Spirit, recorded them for us. Because of this, uh, we would expect to observe the manifestation of these gifts of the Holy Spirit in his own private ministry, in his own personal ministry. We wouldn't expect a person to know a lot about them <laughs> and never functioned in them. That wouldn't seem correct at all. And so he not only understood them uh, as a revelation from God, but he functioned in them uh, in the body. And we wish to show you that at this time. Uh, he was not just a teacher. He was also a, a possessor uh, of these, these gifts of the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 9, and verse 17, we will begin. It says, And Ananias uh, went his way and entered into the house, and putting his hands upon Paul said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto you in the way as, as you came here, he has sent me that you might receive your sight and that you might be filled with the Holy Ghost. So he received the filling of the Holy Ghost through the laying on of hands. Uh, he received his sight at that moment. And he received the infilling of the Holy Spirit from that moment. He later said that he did not go to Jerusalem to learn from the other apostles, but that he went into Arabia. And I think it says for three years or something like that, quite a time. And, uh, and there, through revelation in intensity of seeking the Most High God, he received most of the things that we have in his letters to the churches. Now let's enumerate some of these gifts and how they function in him. Now there are nine gifts, and you should go back into the into this teaching syllabi, especially occasionally, and, 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 and go back and see how the three categories function. That there are, are nine gifts, but the three categories of gifts. And the greatest of the gifts are the are the gifts where God uh, illuminated man's mind and man's spirit through revelation. So the revelatory gifts are the greatest of the, of the nine gifts. They would simply change the world if a body were to use them strongly. Uh, not inside the church, but for the local area and for the national, for the national area. In Acts, in Acts 27 and 23 it says, For there stood by me this night the angel of God, 
whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, you must be brought before Caesar. Now this is knowing the future. And he knew this through an angel. And we, we've studied that, whether we've gotten to it yet or not. Uh, we have studied that not only did men uh, have this amazing gift, but, 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 but Jesus spoke of the future himself through this gift, and that angels did it, and that persons did it, humans. And so, uh, irrespective of who we are, God can permit these gifts to function through us. And that means through you. The, the greatest problem, I believe, in the church is that we feel that only certain people can have certain gifts from God. And, and, and this, according to the Word of God, is, is, is not true. In the Great Commission, uh, the, the Lord Jesus is they that have faith shall cast out devils. And, and so here we, we do not uh, have, a, uh, have a, a, a condition, you know, that, that only certain very special people can have God's power. Uh, but they that have faith, they will do it in, in, in Jesus' name. All right? He says, fear not, you should be brought before Caesar. And God has given you all them that sail with you. I don't know, on a, on a boat that size, how many people? 30, 40, 50, um, maybe 100, I don't know. If it was a large boat. He says, you're going to get them all. Now, brother, that was saying something when a ship was coming to pieces at that moment. They heard the wood cracking and, and breaking and splintering. And here was a man that said, you're going to get to Rome. You're going to see Caesar. And by the way, all of the people on this ship are going to be saved. There won't be one lost. That was quite a revelation. And, and so we see functioning in him uh, the greatest of all gifts, the gift of the word of God's wisdom. And the gift of the word of God's wisdom, you know the future before it takes place. You understand it and you know it and you speak it out. You don't wait till it happen. Yes, says, I knew that from the Lord. Uh, but if you speak it out beforehand, then that's when the people are sure that God spoke to you because you didn't reiterate something another that somebody else had said, but you spoke from God at that time. Number two, uh, the gift of the word of knowledge. Now this is the second of the greatest gifts. And, and, and knowing the future is the gift of the word of wisdom where God makes you wise. Don't ever forget the word word there. Uh, because if you do, you've missed this whole thing. There is no gift of wisdom whatsoever. Uh, God is all wise. He is omniscient. And, and he's all wise. And he can give you a word of his wisdom, you see. And he can give you a word of his knowledge. When you go into an attorney's office and he's got books from the ceiling to the floor and you pay him a certain amount of money to know something, he didn't give you all his knowledge. He only gave you a word of his knowledge. And so God has an abundance of knowledge. He knows whatever's taking place all over the face of this earth right now. And if he made you to realize and to understand a little of it, a bit of it, then you would have a word of God's knowledge. You certainly would not have all of his knowledge. And, and so uh, here, here, here we have the gift of the word of God's knowledge. Uh, Paul knew that the girl in Philippi was a soothsayer. Even though she talked about God, that's in Acts chapter 16 and verse, and, and verse 18. He knew that this young lady, though he said that these are the servants of the Most High God, he knew that an, an evil spirit was saying that through her. There's a lot to be said about that. You know, there are some people that believe anything that anybody says if they claim to be, uh, you know, a prophet or something or another. You have to have a spirit of discernment within you to know that a person is speaking from God. That they're not speaking from an evil situation. We've had things in this country that people say, oh, listen, what God has said, and God hadn't said anything. It was spoken by someone that did not have a relationship with God and was not speaking what, from God at all. So even though this girl that was following them around, she might have been a beautiful girl, uh, but she made her money through soothsaying, and though Paul was a stranger in town and hadn't been down to the soothsayers yet, uh, uh, she began to say, look, these are the, the these, and, and, and he turned and uh, instantly says, I understand who you are. I know who you are. Come out of her. 
and instantly she was delivered by the power of God and the whole city went into an uproar and the men who owned her soul got so angry they wanted to kill Paul because they had lost all their money now. She, she did not have the ability any further to go around tell, telling fortunes. And so here we, we have uh, Paul understanding and knowing things that are. They, they were there. He had an understanding of them that the natural person would not have, you see. But God gave him the understanding of it. So he, he was supernaturally, he was supernaturally brought into a place of knowledge. So that's what this gift's all about. There, if you will we'll, we'll study this gift back here, we've already studied it. You'll find the Bible is full of them, to where God revealed what was taking place in, in, a, in a place further than your ears or your eyes could conceive. But through your spirit, you knew what was taking place in another place. And uh, Elisha, the prophet, was a man who had this gift in abundance. He could sit in his room and tell you what was taking place a long way. He could send notes to the king, says, King, uh, the Syrian army is going to come up on the southeast tonight and they're hiding behind those, sun, those sand dunes. You better go get them. And then he would go over there and, and, and what was said, and he gave them a surprise attack. And, and finally the king of Syria said, Hey, there's a spy among us. And they said, No, there's no spy. It's that preacher over there. He knows everything you do and everywhere you move. Now, What's amazing to me is that these are not just historical situations. Uh, these are reality for today. Say today. Yes. If you're just going to get it in your head, it, that is not what God wants in these last days. I believe he wants the total gifts of the Spirit. But if we don't have an attitude of seeking, searching, longing, crying, yearning, uh, then we won't, we won't be having them in our midst. I don't know why it is, but uh, God will not provide these gifts in any abundance unless they're sought for, unless they're appreciated very deeply, and that unless we pay a price for them, you know, a price of dedication, of cutting off some things and doing something else, uh, of walking in His Spirit and not the, the, the spirit of this world that we live in today. So if one isn't willing to pay the price, and they don't come under this at all churches that are more involved in, in, in all kinds of sports events and all kinds of, uh, you know, of, of things. You're not going to get into these because your heart is somewhere else, you see. I'm glad to tell you that my heart is so solid in one thing. I do just one thing. I just do one thing 24 hours every day. I don't have, I don't have anything else that I do except get the gospel of Jesus out. I don't play games with this thing. I don't give half my time somewhere else. I don't do things on the side. Everything that I do has to do with souls. It don't matter what it is that I do, check it, and it'll go right straight back to souls because we're sold out to that. And that's what God wants. God wants us to say, listen, I want to win the souls and, and do it. And all the people said, and number three, the discerning of spirits. In Acts chapter 16, verse 16, it came to pass as he went to prayer, a certain damsel, that's the same girl. She had a spirit of divination, and she met us and brought, and brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. Imagine, much gain. And, and so uh, in verse 9, it says, And a vision appeared to Paul in the night, and there stood by him a man of Macedonia, praying, saying, Come over into Macedonia and help us. Here we, he was receiving through his spirit orders, you know. And, and if a thing functions and two of the gifts don't, you know, don't be upset with it because these gifts are all one and they function from one, you see. When, when, you, when you read 1 Corinthians chapter 12, the whole chapter is on unity. Unity, you know, oneness. You, you, you've got to have this thing within us. It don't matter if, if two or three of these gifts all swim together. It's all right. Uh, just so we have the ability to understand what's functioning, what's moving, and, and, and so forth. But it doesn't violate anything, is what I'm trying to tell you here, that for you to have two of the, of the gifts functioning in, in, one, in, in one situation. Uh, so, so you have the one that we've already talked about, where he understood the girl through knowledge, and then, and then he, he commanded this thing to come out of her, and she was healed. Then in in verse 9 of chapter 16, this vision, this vision uh, came unto him. And here he knew a situation through spiritual discernment. And he, uh, he had seen an angel. 
he was commissioned to come and he obeyed and he went and that's where these glorious things began began to take place so he had a gift he had a function of the gift of the spirit now you should you could call that a dream or a vision you know whatever but also it comes under the gifts of the spirit of knowing a situation by your spirit that you don't know naturally and so that is in the function of this discerning of spirits then in Acts chapter 13 it says that Elam was a sorcerer uh, for so is his name by interpretation withstood them seeking to turn turn away the deputy from the spirit. So you find here that Paul discerned that this man that was in high places, standing before governors, he discerned that, that here was a man full of evil and corruption. And Paul, without though they were strangers in the natural, Paul spoke right out and says, I just want you to know something. You're full of evil. You're trying to turn this man away from God and uh, you know the judgment that came upon him and so that that's in Acts chapter 13 and verse 8 Paul discerned the spirit of John Mark in Acts 15 and, and verse and verse 38 that uh, here was a young man that the cares of this world had overwhelmed him and uh, he didn't have the right spirit within him of being what God wanted him to be and so uh, Paul discerned that through his spirit he discerned it and then in Acts chapter 19 and verse 13, in certain of the vagabond G Jews who were exorcists uh, took upon them to call over them uh, which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you by Jesus, whom Paul preaches. Uh, that's a whole ser sermon in there because these, these young men belong, and their father uh, was a was a rabbi or a high place among the people, but they, they saw something here that was very good. And they saw that when Paul's words spoke, or Jesus spoke, that, that demons came out of people and they thought, well, here, we'll make some money. He says, I, I command you in the same one that Paul preaches about. But if you read that whole story there, those demons came out of those uh, evil people, but they went and beat them up and pulled their clothes off of them and they ran screaming naked through the streets uh, by the, because the demons had overcome them. Uh, we have quite a few lessons in that type of thing, showing you first who cannot cast out devils. Evil people cannot. Using the name of Jesus will not bring out a demon spirit if you're not in the proper relationship with Jesus. Can you say amen? That is so true. But we, we are just dealing at this moment on, on the, the gifts of the Spirit that function in this great man. That he not only taught about him, he not only knew about him, he not only had a revelation concerning him, but they were a part of his very life. I, I'd, I'd hate to have a, a, a knowledge of something. Um, I need to teach in a Bible school, and my, my teaching was evangelism, and I never got anybody saved. There are people that do that every day of the world. What do you teach in Bible college? Oh, I teach evangelism. How many people have you gotten saved? Nobody. In, 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 in Singapore, uh, they had a young man there and they were supporting him. The church was supporting him. And uh, he, he got up and gave his little talk that, that he was a missionary to the Muslims. And then he told how many Muslims that were in the world and what all he wanted to do for all the Muslims everywhere in, in, in the world. And uh, when he came and sat down, I leaned over to him and I said, uh, Brother, how many Muslims have you ever gotten saved? He said, none. I didn't want to hurt him too much. I wanted to say, well, listen, uh, until you get somebody saved, for God's sake, change your name, you know? Just get anybody saved to get somebody saved. And when you get a Muslim saved, then tell them that you're, you're, you're working with Muslims. Are you here? You haven't started yet till you get one. And so God can give you one. Preaching about it and lecturing about it is not what we're talking about. And I want to say that to the church. I want to say that to the whole church in the United States of America or to the world and say to have the gifts of the Spirit in your mind is not sufficient. It's having them in active functioning in our hearts and lives. And all the people said,
Amen. Now, number four, uh, Paul witnessed mighty healings in his personal ministry. Now, uh, we have moved from the gifts of, uh, that are revelatory, uh, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, discerning of spirits. Now we've moved into gifts of power, uh, or, or gifts of energy. And, it's, and, and it says in Acts 14, 8, and there sat a certain man at Lystra, uh, impotent in his feet, uh, being a cripple from his mother's womb, uh, who had never had walked, you see. And the power of God came upon the man. He was instantly healed. And so he not only saw the future, he saw the present also, you know, he, he saw it. And, and then in Romans 15 and 18, I will not dare to speak of those, any of those things which Christ hath not, you know, that, 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 that's a good verse. You ought to underline that one very, very strong. Uh, he didn't want to talk of any of the things that Christ hadn't done through him. Say through him. Yeah. What has God done through us? If all the information we have in our minds was done in our working order and our spirits, we could change the world. And all the people said, Have he hath not wrought by me to make the nations to be obedient by word and deed. You ought to underline those. That's talking and doing. Uh, through mighty signs, you see, and wonders, by the power of the Holy Spirit, it came from Jerusalem, round about into Illyricum, which is up in the middle of Europe. He crossed two continents in the ocean with it. I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. Yea, so have I strived to preach the gospel, not where Christ was named, lest I should be building upon another man's foundation. He was what you'd call him a pioneer. He didn't have to go where somebody already had a church. He went and built his own. All right. Then, and number five, you have the gift of faith. And, and here you have the, the, the story of where he took a viper and just shook it off. Faith is when God does it and you don't do it. And the working of miracles is when God does it. And you do, I mean, you, but he does it through you. Uh, in, in some way, uh, through your hands, through your mind or whatnot. God does this thing through you. And, and in, the, in the gift of faith, he does it for you. It's, it's uh, either through you or for you. All right, and, and uh, point number seven, the gift of prophecy. First Corinthians 14, three says, he that prophesied speaketh unto men to edification, exhortation, comfort. These are the three vital categories of blessing that comes by prophecy. Edification means to build up. Exhortation means don't quit, don't stop, don't get discouraged. Comfort means be healed of your hurts. So many church people have hurts. Be healed of your hurts. The gift of the speaking in tongues, I thank my God that I speak in tongues more than ye all. And so there was no doubt about his functioning in these gifts. And the gift of the interpretation of tongues also. And then in point number 10, what Paul said of himself concerning the gifts of the Spirit. I suppose I was not a whit behind the very chiefest apostles. That's 2 Corinthians 11, 5, Romans 12 and 6. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, for the prophecy let us prophesy uh, according to the proportion of faith uh, that we have. Uh, what we what we need to realize is that we're all part of the body of Christ and, and we're not jealous of what God does through another, but we're thankful for it. And that whoever it functions through, that we're one body. And as I said, that's taught so strong in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. In 1 Corinthians 7 and 7, 4, I would that all men were even as I myself. But every man hath his, hath his proper gift of God one after this manner and another after that. Isn't it amazing that that's been there for these 2,000 years? Isn't that wonderful? And, it, and it's so simple. It's just for us today that we, we're all kinds of people and there are nine different gifts and we can all function just like Jesus wants us to function. Aren't you glad for that? Okay. Father, bless these that hear and let them do more than hear. Let them understand. And let them more than understand. Let them do and let them see that in this, in this man, Paul, though he was an outcast one time, and though he was far from God one time, he entered in 
And through his perseverance and courage and faith, he became one of the very leaders of this great spiritual movement. So we say, Lord, we all have, a, we all have an opportunity to move with God and to be great with God. I believe you to bless us in Jesus' name. And all the people said, give the Lord a hand, everybody. Praise God.